Generally, your lateral movement come from the corners of the mouth. Your vertical movements come from the bars, the tongue, the pole, and the chin. Now, as you get to a taller port, a taller port is going to get you more shoulder lift. So depending on what you need your horse to do is going to determine the bit that you put in your horse's mouth. I'll ride different horses in different bits because I can use that bit to help strengthen what their weaknesses are. I typically start transitioning a horse out of a snaffle bit within 90 days of starting him under saddle. There are things that I need that horse to do to elevate his shoulders leg yield and do things that I need to start building muscle for, so I will get that horse out of a snaffle bit within 90 days of starting him under saddle. I want to take a minute and talk about bits. I've had a lot of questions about bits lately. Uh, everything that I train is geared towards showing in ranch riding, reining and working cow horse. So all of the bits that I use is geared towards teaching the horse to move in the ways that I need it to move for those events. So I'm going to talk about uh, a snaffle bit. This is the bit that I put a horse in in the very beginning when I'm first starting a horse. I prefer a D-ring snaffle that tapers to the middle. This is the bit that I'm going to use to start my flexion work. Uh, if I'm showing a horse in a snaffle bit, this cannot be a chain. I'm going to get all my bending and flexion done in this bit basic bit to get it started. I typically start transitioning a horse out of a snaffle bit within 90 days of starting him under saddle. I don't keep him in a snaffle bit very long. There are things that I need that horse to do to elevate his shoulders, leg yield, and do things that I need to start building muscle for that even though you hear everything can be done in a snaffle bit, it cannot be done correctly in a snaffle bit. So I will get that horse out of a snaffle bit within 90 days of starting him under saddle. Typically, there are a few ex exceptions. Now, if I have a horse that's really lugging on my hands, what I will go to before I put him in a shank bit, I want to get him softer on my hands. The horse needs to be soft before you transition him out of a snaffle. He needs to understand the pressure points of what this snaffle is asking him to do. Once he understands those pressure points, it's time to get him out of the snaffle. But if you have a horse that's lugging on your hands and it's kind of dead to your hands, I'll put this snaffle bit on him. It's a plain ring snaffle, nothing special about it, but it weighs about four pounds. And I'll put any horse that's kind of lugging on my hands, I'll put on this bit, put this bit on. This is a legal show bit. You can use this bit to show in the AQHA, NRHA, and NRCHA. This is a legal bit but I typically don't show in it because my objective is to get them out of this bit and moved into a bridle. If I'm showing in a snaffle bit class, I do show some aged event horses in snaffle bit classes. It's the same bit that I just showed you, the same bit that I started in, but I do not keep him in this snaffle bit the whole time that I'm riding. According to uh, most association rules, you can show a horse in a snaffle bit five years and under. A little bit of variance in there. But just because that horse is four and five years old and I started him as a two or three year old, he's bridle broke. I'm just going back to a snaffle and showing him in a snaffle bit. Let's talk about a couple um, various bits that when you go into a leverage bit. This is usually the first bit that I go to, first leverage bit. It's pretty basic. Has a, a port, maybe an inch or an inch and a quarter, nothing special about it. It is a solid mouthpiece. As a general rule, a solid mouthpiece will keep your horse straighter for elevation, where a broken mouthpiece will get the horse a little bit more bendy. However, if you get your horse bendy through the body with your legs, keeping his neck straight with an unbroken mouthpiece. And if you can control his body with your legs, you're gonna have an easier time getting his shoulders elevated and his back end engaged. I will use a broken mouth shank bit some, but very rarely. It's usually a solid mouthpiece bit. <clears throat> when I have this bit in the horse's mouth, I want the bit to rotate about 90 degrees or almost 90 degrees if it's a low port. 
before the curb chain makes contact. So if this is hanging in a horse's mouth, it's going to rotate close to 90 degrees before the curb chain makes contact. That gives that horse plenty of notice that that contact is coming before he gets contact on the curb chain in the pole. You'll see when we go to a taller port bit, that changes. I never ride a horse more than three rides in a row in the same bit. <clears throat> I might, if I'm just starting to transition a horse out of a snaffle, I might ride him twice in a snaffle and then once in the shank bit. There's seven pressure points on a horse's head. I'm going to get all seven pressure points broke. And by that, that horse is going to know what to do with all seven pressure points. That's the corner of his mouth, the bars, the roof of his mouth. If it was taller, this one was not going to touch. The curb chain, that's one. His nose, if you use a hackamore, and the pole, and the tongue. That's your seven pressure points. The different bits put different amounts of pressure on different places. This is going to give a little bit of tongue release, a little bit less pressure on his tongue, where if it was straight across, it would give a little bit more pressure. But you also have to take into account how thick that horse's tongue is. You could have a real thick-tongued horse and use a port like this and still have more pressure on the tongue than you do the bars if that horse's tongue is holding that bit off of the bars. So you have to be, you have to look into your horse's mouth and see how he's built and look at where you're getting that pressure. I want that horse broke to pressure in all of these points so that when he feels that pressure, he knows what to do. Every pressure point is going to do something a little bit different. Generally, your lateral movements come from the corners of the mouth. Your vertical movements come from the bars, the tongue, the pole, and the chin. Just a general rule. Now, as you get to a taller port, a taller port is going to get you more shoulder lift. So depending on what you need your horse to do is going to determine the bit that you put in your horse's mouth. I'll ride different horses in different bits because I can use that bit to help strengthen what their weaknesses are. So if I'm riding a horse in this bit, say I've just started him in this bit, once in a while, I'll transition him back down to a snaffle. Once in a while, I'll go up to this bit. This bit is very similar to that bit. The port is a little bit different shape. And because of the shakes being different, they're going to get a different feel as it rotates. So that's going to help keep that horse's mouth fresh because I'm not putting the same amount of pressure every time on that horse's mouth. I don't know if you can see... But this shank right here has a little bit of taper to it, and it's not straight across. So this bit is going to put different pressure on the bars than what this bit is going to put. This bit is the same taper all the way across, and the corners are different. So even though these bits look very similar, it's going to put different pressures on the, ho the horse's bars, different release to the tongue so this these two bits are going to feel very different in a horse's mouth that's going to help keep your horse's mouth fresh by fresh <clears throat> by fresh i mean soft and supple in responding to the pressure points if you always use the same bit on a horse's mouth that part of his body that that bit is always contacting if it's always contacting in the same way He's going to develop a little bit of a callus, a little solidness to that point. <clears throat> Where if I'm constantly changing, then he's not going to develop that hardness in, in his bars or tongue or wherever. And it's not a matter of pulling hard. It's a matter of just using that contact. It's kind of like your feet. As you walk around more on your feet, you're going to develop calluses on the bottom because you're walking on those same pads on the bottom of your feet all the time. I'm riding these horses four, five, six days a week. And if I'm always making the same exact contact in the same exact way, that horse is going to build up a little bit of a hardness, a little bit of a callus in his mouth, just like your feet build up pads from walking. So I have a couple more bits that are simple, but have a little bit different shapes. Here's another one, for example. 
Very similar to the other two, but it has a little bit different shape to the mouthpiece. So this is gonna give the horse a little bit different feel. This is a little bit shorter shank. It's gonna have a little bit different ratio of pressure of bar pressure to ch curb chain, which is under the chin, and pole pressure. So as you change in your shank length, I'm changing the ratio of pressure from the bars to the chin and the pole. So I'm changing which one gets more pressure and which one gets pressure first. So that's how the curb, the shank of your bit plays into it. Now, as I'm starting to advance a horse out of just a low port, I'm going to go to something like this. I go to something like this because with uh, showing NRCHA, we need a roller. This is actually a very uh, soft, mild bit. These roll on the bars. These roll on the tongue. The port is not tall enough to reach the horse's, the roof of the horse's mouth. So this is usually a bit that I'm transitioning to. But then again, I, I never ride a horse more than three times in the same bit. So I might be swapping back and forth every few rides. <clears throat> Generally in training, when you teach a horse something, let's say you're teaching uh, a maneuver, you're gonna at, teach that maneuver slowly. You're gonna ask for a little effort. It's probably gonna fall apart a little bit. Then you're gonna back back down, reinforce the maneuver, whatever you're asking for, then build back uh, a degree of difficulty, build back speed. Same way with the horse. I am constantly building up the contacts, the control points, the seven pressure points, building them up, building that understanding, building that communication with that horse. So as we build up, I'm developing that communication. When I get a horse finished out in a bridle, it really doesn't matter what bit you put on them because they understand individually what each, what each one part is. Uh, what each pressure point means. So transitioning from there, I like to go to this bit. This is also still, even though it, it looks a little bit bigger and massive, this is a really nice bit. The area here on the bars tapers. So that's gonna give different pressure, just like I talked about the other bit tapering. It has a roller under here. Then it has this cover over the roller. This gives a nice, big, smooth area for if that bit does touch the roof of the horse's mouth, it's smooth contact. But this bit, actually, most horses, it's not going to touch the roof of a horse's mouth. When you look in your horse's mouth, some of them have taller roofs. It's kind of like a curve to the roof of the mouth. Some of them are taller than others. If you have one that's really low and flat at the top, this one might touch it, but most of them are not. I have a, a leather curb strap on this one and not a curb chain because this bit itself is NRCHA legal. So to keep it legal, I have a leather curb strap. That way I can show in this bit. So if I have a horse that's really heavy on the shoulders in Virch's body. I need to get the shoulders up. I need to get more engagement in the back end. I will transition to a taller port. And this is usually the bit that I go to. People think of a taller port, a bigger bit, as being stop. And it actually, this bit has nothing to do with stop. This taller port will make contact with the roof of the mouth will elevate the horse's shoulders and give me more engagement. People have in their mind, you put a bigger bit on to stop a horse. Well, actually, I use this bit with a lazier horse so that I can get the shoulders up and get the back end engaged. Usually, if I need more roundness, I go to a port. Port's going to help you with roundness. This bit is uh, AQHA and NRHA legal, and uh, but it's not NRCHA legal. It's not cow horse legal. So if I have a horse that's just going to show ranch riding or is going to show in AQHA classes, this is normally the bit that they will top out at. But if I have a horse that's going to show in cow horse, I'll go to this bit. It's basically the same bit, except it has a roller in it. 
and then I put a leather curb strap on the back. That makes this, whore, this bit in our CHA legal. Does basically the same thing. <clears throat> now one exception that I have with a taller port bit versus a lower port bit is I want the bit, I want the curb strap to engage with about 30 degrees of rotation because I don't want to rotate this so that it's pointing straight up in the horse's mouth. I want this to engage, the curb strap to engage, which is going to engage the pole with about 30 degrees of rotation. I want this bit to operate between 30 and 60 degrees of rotation, where my other bit, the shorter shank bit, where this bit operates to between 60 and 90 degrees of rotation. That's the difference in how I adjust the curb chain or the curb strap. I am not dead set on any one brand. Some of the, the simpler bits, like these bits that I use, they are usually weavers. Uh, you have to be careful with any bit that you buy as far as the company. Quality varies even inside one company. You can't say that all one brand bits are good because they most of them honestly are made overseas and you really don't know what you're getting. This bit I had custom made locally. If you want to get good quality bits, a custom made bit is the way to go. And they're not as expensive as you would think. So a little bit variation, like I said, I might would, uh, like I said, I'm going to never ride a horse in the same bit more than three rides in a row. So my comparable bit to this one is this one. It's basically the same bit, just a little bit different. The mouthpiece is a little bit different. This one's just a little smaller diameter where that one's a little bit bigger. The shape of the spoon is a little bit different. Other than that, it's basically the same bit. So if you have any questions about bits, uh, put them in the comments below. Uh, as I said, everything that I do goes towards showing. So everything is going to be out of a snaffle bit before it's five years old and will be in a leverage bit. Doesn't do me any good to keep a horse in a snaffle bit any longer than it has to be unless I'm planning on showing that horse in a snaffle bit class. If you have any questions about bits, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Until next time, thank you for watching.